Greetings, adventurous travelers and fellow keepers of the lake. Oh, look at how I gradually progress deeper and deeper into marker paint. Okay, right, so we are here to talk about combat. First of all, we need to know what phases are. Phases are basically, well, let me show you. Uh, if you look at your character sheet, you would uh, see phases here, or if you're using the official one from the book, they would be like somewhere around down here. Anyways, you have five phases, and think of them as moments in an action scene where something happens. You are free to choose one phase, one of the five phases, and you choose outside combat so in time you will get comfortable with playing in a certain phase let's say that you will play in phase two so let's say you will label phase two as phase when you will act what can you do in a phase well you can certainly move also if you're not moving you can do something interesting maybe an action and yeah you might be like why why can't i do both well you kind of can it's called a hurry you can hurry, but you're exposing yourself to the enemy. They get a bonus when they are attacking you. So you might think that it is a limiting thing that you can only either move or do something. But you will see that the rounds in this game go so fast that you're not really hindered. If you say so, then what is the duration of a phase? I don't know. Um, 10 seconds per phase, maybe per round. Uh, I will put like some guidelines here, but yeah, you can like free wallet. You don't need to know that let's see how this would work in practice let's say we have these four phases you would usually have five i just had no space to write the fifth one so please help me out here subvert your disbelief you can think of dragons you can certainly think of uh, one more circle here and we said that you are playing on the second one let's say that the monsters are playing on the fourth one and we have one big bad monster that is playing on both the first and the third one here right so how does initiative function well you have simple initiative or you have role initiative simple initiative is just we go uh, through the phases and play one by one the role initiative is basically the GM and the player roll a die and if the GM succeeds we start from the enemy's phase if the PC succeeds, we start from the first PC's stage. So let's see what would happen in the situation we have over here. Uh, the GM screams, who's up? It's phase one. And we look at the phase trackers. So if no players have their uh, phases here, then the enemies go. If there are enemies and players in the same phase, the players always go first. Here, the enemy goes first. How would that look like? Well, the enemy wants to hurt you. It tries to stab you with a spear. You roll your defense rolls. How the defense rolls work? Well, you look at your defense value, you subtract the enemy's attack, and if your roll is less than that, you succeed, you're not hurt. If it's above that, you are hurt. And now what happens? It doesn't deal uh, damage in a sense that it deals number damage to your health. As we said in one of the videos, I think it was the equipment one, you don't have any health, you have only gear and skills. So this enemy hits you, it thrusts the spear uh, into your body. What happens? It deals attrition damage. I, If you don't know what that is, basically I've heard this word for the first time in, in this game, so I don't know. It's a... Uh, it's damage, so the enemy can deal these types of damage, and only these types of damage. It can deal multiple of these, but it can only deal uh, these types of damage. So basic attrition would mean that you would take your character sheet and you would cross off one skill or equipment your choice. Flesh attrition would do that only to skills. Uh, equipment attrition would do that only to equipment and of course you have destroy which will permanently destroy a skill or the equipment and now I, I can surely hear you like think why in the world would this be a good idea especially if you can only choose which one you lose with basic attrition these three are totally random you roll a die say I don't know I'm losing jump okay you're losing jump how did that happen? Well, well, it boils down to narrative, so you're emphasized to come up with a reason why this is happening. So the, the monster stabbed you in your legs, you cannot jump anymore until you're healed. So narrative is what drives the play here. Again, you lost your staff. What happened with your staff? Well, uh, this is your staff. It is dropped, so you need to run and take it, and then you have, you have kind of healed. This creates a narrative like... Um, 
situation where you would risk your life not to hide and drink a potion but to actually retrieve your staff which means that if your uh, fellow player jumps in and takes your staff and throws it at you uh, you catch it you basically healed from afar even though she's not a healer it opens so many things and and narrative becomes so much more coherent than what we have in regular play i have of course my own doubts and questions but i would encourage you to try it out before you start patching out stuff in game also let's say the other enemy hits you as well and you drop your helmet you lost your defense now so your defense is now lower and what you do is you Oh, sorry about the gloss, I just had to turn on some light, very bad positioning, but yeah, who cares. Uh, you lost your equipment, so you lost your defense. And now your priority becomes, I need to get my helmet, because if you don't get your helmet, you have less defense, you have one less health, so it is of great importance that you shift your focus onto the helmet. The good thing is here that you don't have any attack opportunity, so they are not gonna attack you while you run. Now, you would say, okay, can I hold a backup helmet in my purse, for example? Yeah, sure, you can have a backup. The thing is that this backup doesn't really add to your defense until you equip it. You can do one action to like take it out or and equip it. If you ask me, I don't know what the official rule is, is taking something out of the bag an action. I would assume if you have to like take time to find it, but like in general, like you, you know what to do. It's, it's the same as in other games. Okay, the light should be better now. So you also have like some other sources of like delayed attrition, which is, for example, imagine that this uh, enemy that hits you, that it caused bleed. Well, bleed and poison damage your skills and equipment randomly for some prolonged duration. You also have corrosion and burn. Corrosion damages your equipment for a prolonged period of time and burn basically burns everything. So you burn, your equipment burns, your life burns, your hopes and dreams burn. And these status effects last for 1d4 rounds. Since you basically have one phase per round, that means four of your turns. So let's clean this up as usual. Right, so we will keep this here because this is the name of the game, people. Right, so how do you die? Um, oh no, the skull has a, has a little friend. Uh, well, if you lose all your skills and all your gear, you would take a blow to the heart. When this happens, you have time up until the end of the fifth round or you're permanently dead and now you see why enemies that attack on the fourth for example and are very very powerful they might kill you and you would have only one phase to get revived this is why healers it is your duty to act after the strongest foe so that you can raise up your allies before they uh, look eye to eye with uh, a seven-eyed compass here and recalculate their life choices before going to internal torment because they killed three shopkeepers and two cats on the way here. Okay, now that you've been beaten to death by these enemies, you want your sweet sweet revenge, right? So you want that sweet sweet damage to get rolling. Uh, but you would say, do I need to hit the enemy first? No, in Crown and Skull, there is no to hit roll. You just roll damage. Let's say your weapon has, let's say this weapon has D8 damage. Well, you just roll the D8 and subtract enemy's defenses. And that goes straight into the enemy's body, making it look like a dead spaghetti, which is what you want, right? Of course, where there is death, there is also um, life, healing. So how do you heal? Well, basically you have a couple of options. You can heal your skills or heal your flesh, however you want to call it, which is basic healing magic potions or first aid. And it would make you... Ah, it, it fell on its own. So yeah, it would uh, recover one skill that is crossed off. If you have, a, for example, a repair or an armored skill, you could take some time, for example, a couple of rounds uh, to repair one equipment, which is not destroyed. So uh, your human fighter that is specializing in inflicting as much pain as possible, doesn't carry potions, he recovers the repair kit and starts like pounding on his crooked armor behind the rock while squishy characters try to cover him so he can kill and continue tanking. Amazing stuff. Again, 
narrative 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 that's the name of the game to fully heal you need to be in a safe space so no enemies around you no imminent threats if you have a good night's rest and sleep you would recover 1d4 skills and equipment other than that like what do you do when you're in the field and you want to like heal up in between encounters well you can always take a breather uh, if you have like a couple of minutes in between encounters for example when you're done with an encounter, just sheesh, take a breather. And what that does is you can recover one skill or one equipment. And yeah, uh, also like two more things that I couldn't like uh, fit in here uh, swiftly. You can have a circumstance bonus. Like if you um, stay to your DM, look DM, I'm on a roof and I'm jumping down on this guard and I have a dagger in my hand. Would it be like sound to think that I'm deadly at this point? Would it be sound to think that I will deal deadly damage? And yeah, the DM would say, okay, make it deadly. It means that you roll double damage, basically. You roll double damage die. Um, so you can use the narrative to your advantage and describe how do you attack. That would probably give you some form of a boost with your DM and you would deal deadly damage. Maybe some other uh, modifier would also work like this. And of course, there are status effects. I don't want to like go through them. I'll just like show it somewhere here so you know which ones exist. The usual ones, basically. Right, yeah, uh, this was so intense to film all of these videos in, in one go. But yeah, I hope this is useful. I hope that you learned something. If you have any questions, don't forget, you can always go to the Runehammer Discord. I am there. The creator of the game is there. You can meet so many cool people, see the builds, see the ideas, the, the, the homebrew, all that stuff. So come to the Runehammer Discord. If you like this game, ask questions, uh, start rolling dice, start playing, yeah. And this time I'm going to do the full uh, outro, so here we go. And as always, keep on going, keep on loving, keep on being creative, play more D&D, and I will see you in the next one. Farewell, Keepers.